Hi, we're here today with Justin Roy Samron, who's going to show us how to make uh, fermented shishito peppers. Uh, we just picked these peppers this morning. Uh, most of these are shishitos, but we also have uh, a pepper called roulette and a jalapeno and a ghost pepper, with, which, we've in, which we'll be including in the recipe. We're trying to solve for the problem of the fact that, you know, even if you just have a couple of pepper plants, they're very prolific. And it's now the end of the summer, we're getting into the fall, we're wondering what to do with all of these peppers. Um, one solution would be to create a pepper paste, um, and we're going to do it using lacto uh, fermentation. Um, so what you need, um, it's very simple. Uh, you just need to cut up your peppers um, and stick them in a jar. I like to cut them up because, you know, I want the brine solution to basically cover the entire peppers. The peppers we have again? Well, these lo these, these uh, green ones that are three inches long about our shishitos. Um, a very popular pepper uh, recently, um, a very pricey pepper in the supermarket, $4.99 a pound. But I find them to be one of the easiest and most prolific peppers to grow. Easier than sweet pepper, bell peppers, or, or any of the others, because they produce early and they produce a lot throughout the season. Um, definitely up till frost. So, uh, but we're also putting in there, so uh, some jalapenos. Uh, these, uh, you know, everybody knows jalapenos from, you know, um, Mexican food, a Southwestern food. And then this pepper here, <clears throat> that looks like, uh, uh, habanero um, is not actually, it's called roulette, and it's uh, um, not really hot. It's mildly hot. Uh, the seeds are hot a bit. Uh, the flesh is, is fruit, uh, fruity and sweet. Um, very, very tasty and easy to grow too. What I love about this is that we're sourcing all of these peppers from literally within 25 feet of where we're standing right now here in Bridge Garden. All you need to do is you just need to pack up your jar uh, with the peppers. I'm using a tamper here. You could use your hands. You could use um, um, a, um, God, what do you call those? The rolling pins. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have, you can use it any kind of jar that you want, right? Yeah, you do. Um, I would just recommend that you have a jar that closes. I like using glass jars because you could, you could see the peppers, um, see how beautiful it is. Um, but you basically just, you know, I like to put in a lot of peppers just because I want to have as much paste uh, per, you know, area of within the jar. Um, but after you finish stuffing up your jar, you add your salt brine. So what I'm using is a 3% brine solution. Um, there's a, a number of brine calculators that are on the internet. Just, to, you know, look up brine calculator to figure out, you know, how much salt you need to add to your water to create a brine solution. And um, any kind of salt? I prefer sea salt or kosher salt. I just wouldn't use uh, regular table salt. Gotcha. Um, the tap water is also locally sourced. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so you just want to make sure that the brine, you know, basically covers all of the pepper. So I'm just going to press it down a little bit more just to make sure that um, there are no air pockets. And what you do to make sure that um, everything continues to stay submerged is you need some kind of weight. Um, here we, we are um, DIYing it by using a rock that we found, again, 25 feet away. Um, and we're just going to you know, cover it with pla in a plastic bag so that you know, we don't contaminate the um, pepper paste. And then um, just use it, to, uh, just stick it in so that you're able to just make sure that all of the peppers are submerged in the brine. I would cover this up, um, but then you know, the pepper paste will produce a lot of carbon dioxide through the natural fermentation process. So, Every couple of days, I would just you know, maybe basically twist it a little bit just to release some of the carbon dioxide. Maybe press down the um, the weight a little bit more just to make sure that you got you know you release all the carbon dioxide and just close it up again. So you let this sit for about two weeks. Um, I you know did uh, this particular jar, which included it looks like jalapeno, ginger, and garlic, and other chilies. Um, I did this about two weeks ago, and you could see that. Um, the, the brine solution has turned a little bit cloudy. That's the natural part of the fermentation process. And after about two weeks, you, know, um, you could just grind up the peppers into a paste. Um, I like to use it as a paste, but you could also, if you don't want to 
to have the, if you don't want to use the peppers, you can also just use the brine as a, as a, um, oh, like hot sauce. A condiment. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and do you grind it by hand or, or? No, I, I just stuck this in the food processor. You can also use the blender um, to just, to just grind it up. Okay. Now, and do you, um, after you grind it up, do you, um, uh, put it in the refrigerator or you keep it out or you could keep it out but I you know if you like the taste of it I would taste it if you like it then just stick it in your fridge and it'll last you know a, you know, a few months now um, the one that I made from your Shoshito peppers last year you know has lasted until I think I'm just at the very end of, of that paste yes I, I have a little bit of what you gave me left and it's and it really is delicious and it keeps it just keeps forever I have it in the fridge yeah yeah it, it does it does so so what have you used yours for <clears throat> Gee, just about everything um, on, <clears throat> on on chicken on, on fish on vegetables in stews, um, vegetables. I, I, I really do like in stews I love it in um, um, baked beans I like it in my curries um, I added to hummus. Oh, yeah, it'd be good. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, it's very versatile. It really is. You could make dips from it. Um, definitely with okay. sour cream and yogurt and or um, be wonderful. So, and, and just say again, how long did it take? Um, how long will that take before you can grind it up? At a minimum, I would wait at least two weeks. Two weeks. Um, I think the the pepper paste that I gave you, I waited about three months. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. I ju I just like to wait a little bit longer. But you could, if you know, if you need your pepper paste right now. Two weeks, grind it up, taste it, see if you like it. If you, you know, if you think that it should um, benefit or it would benefit from more fermentation, just leave it in a jar, and this will continue to ferment. You can see if you take a look really closely, you'll see little bubbles coming up. Um, that's the carbon dioxide being released as part of the fermentation process. So the longer you leave it, the more flavor. Uh, it depends on what you mean by more flavor. I mean it'll it'll definitely get more sour, um, and the flavor flavor will tend to develop. They, they tell me that the people who make the Tabasco sauce, you know, they leave their peppers in wooden barrels for years. So it, it could be as long as you want. Wow. Well, this is this is wonderful. I can't wait to, to try this, this new batch. Um, I'm sure it'll be as good as the other that you gave me. So uh, thank you for being with us uh, today. Jesse. No, thank you for having me.